for this part, we state a general formula for arc length along a parabola using only elementary functions. So we trade in hyperbolic trig functions for natural log and square root. First, we'll state our result. Then we'll verify our example from part two using the new result. Then we'll outline a proof to get our formula. And then I'll give an alternate derivation of the formula that doesn't use hyperbolic trig functions. Now, statement of the formula, what we need to do, we have to compute four quantities, and then we put these four quantities into our formula. So if we have y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, I assume a is a positive number. We're going to have arc length measured from x equal to l1 to x equal to l2. So our picture is something like this. For the general formula, we first compute d1 and d2. These are just the derivative of the function for our parabola evaluated at the endpoints. Once I have those, I compute s1 and s2. If you note, what we have here looks like square root of 1 plus okay, the derivative of our function squared. So this is looking like the element for arc length evaluated at the endpoints. Now, once we have these four items, we're going to put them into this expression here. So it's complicated, but it's not as complicated as it could be. So we'll explain how to get this in a little bit. Let's verify our formula using the example from part two. So the parabola, y equals 1 tenth x squared minus 1 tenth x plus 20. x is going from 0 to 20. So a is 1 tenth. b is equal to minus 1 tenth. d1 is going to be equal to minus 1 tenth. d2 is going to be 3.9. Then I'll use a calculator to compute S1 and S2. We substitute into our formula, okay, over here. Then when we collapse everything, we get 44.93, and that agrees with our method from before. Now, we want to show the general formula. I'm going to take the antiderivative from parts one and two, replace the inverse cinch, with this expression here. So let's show this first. Now, if I have inverse cinch of box, if I want to unwind this, I have to give it a name. So let's call it x. Then to say that inverse cinch of box is equal to x, same as saying that cinch of x is equal to box. Now, I'm going to go to the definition of cinch of x. So that's in part one. That says, e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 is equal to box. I'll push the 2 to the other side. We'll take the 2 box, put it back on this side, and I multiply through by e to the x. So that'll remove the e to the minus x. That's going to give me this quadratic. So I have e to the 2x minus 2 box e to the x minus 1 equals 0. And we can apply the quadratic equation to solve for e to the x. The result with e to the x is equal to box plus or minus square root of 1 plus box squared. Now, to decide which one we go with, note that e to the x is always a positive number for any x. Now, because of this and the fact that box squared is strictly less than box squared plus 1, okay, we can square root both sides. To get this to be a positive number, I have to go with the plus sign. Now, that gives us an expression for e to the x. So I can get rid of the e by just taking natural log of both sides. So we have the x is equal to natural log of box plus square root of 1 plus box squared, as promised. So that lets us remove our hyperbolic trig function. Let's look at an outline for the general proof. Now, this is going to follow in the same manner as parts 1 and 2. I'm just going to keep track of all of our letters now. So we have our parabola, ax squared plus bx plus c. Limits are l1 and l2. Derivative of the function for our parabola is y prime equal to 2ax plus b. We have our formula for arc length. Okay, so we're taking definite integral from l1, l2, and x. 
square root of 1 plus y prime squared. Okay, so we substitute in for y prime, and then we're working with this. Now, to get to our antiderivative from parts 1 and 2, okay, our trick is to let 2ax plus b squared be equal to 4u squared. So, the substitution I want to make is 2u equals 2ax plus b. So, I'll take derivatives on both sides to find our differentials. Then we're going to solve for u to get our new limits. Then, going to our antiderivative from parts 1 and 2, we know that this is equal to, okay, we're going to carry this 1 over a around. So, we have this expression here, this expression here, plus our constant of integration. I'm going to remove the inverse cinch of 2u. So, we just use this expression here, and that gets me down to this expression for the antiderivative. Then I want to substitute in the limits from here. So at this point, it's all bookkeeping. So I'll leave that to you. Here's another derivation of our antiderivative from parts one and two. In this case, we avoid hyperbolic trig functions completely. The trade-off, we need to know how to compute the antiderivative of secant cubed. Now, we have our definite integral. We use the same strategy as before. I'm looking for a function to sub out this 4u squared so that the square root goes away in the integrand. So instead of using cos squared equals 1 plus sin squared, we're going to use 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared. So I want to let 4u squared be equal to tan squared. We'll have 2u equals tan x. And then taking the derivative of both sides, we get 2du equals secant squared x dx. If I substitute, this term here collapses to a secant x, and then du is just secant squared x dx over 2. So now I need the antiderivative of secant cubed of x. Okay, that's a video in itself. What we need to compute this is integration by parts twice. So when we figure this out, what we get is 1 half secant x tan x over 2 plus natural log absolute value of secant x plus tan x over 2 plus our constant of integration. Now, we want to remove the x, okay, because our problem is stated in terms of u. So, we're just going to draw a right triangle, we'll label the legs, and then try to figure out what these terms turn into. Now, our substitution is 2u equals 10 of x. 10 of x is opposite over adjacent on the right triangle. So our opposite will let be 2u. The adjacent will let be 1, which means our hypotenuse is going to be square root of 1 plus 4u squared. So the secant of x, okay, that's 1 over cosine, so I have hypotenuse over adjacent, which gives me square root of 1 plus 4u squared. Now we can just substitute in for tan x and secant x. So secant x tan x over 2, that's just 2u squared of 1 plus 4u squared. That looks familiar. 4 natural log of secant x plus tan x over 2. Okay, what are we going to have? Secant x is squared of 1 plus 4u squared. Tan x is 2u. And we've already seen that this term is always going to be positive, so I could drop the absolute value signs. Okay, you'll note this looks a lot like the expression we had on the previous board. And then that'll get us to our general formula. 